We're on the home stretch of these stakes right here. And uh, we're going to try a new beer with some more ribeyes. Can't go wrong there, right? Stretch, folks, got about 20 seconds left. I'm gonna turn this heat off. And we're gonna plate these up, gonna drip a little juice on them, and then we're gonna let them set for just a little bit. All right, six and a half minutes on each side. The heat is off. Get out of here. Got those onions falling off. Mm -hmm. Put all this in there. It looks like you're gonna take all these butters and drippings and stuff and just pour it right over the top of these steaks. We're gonna let this settle and sit for another five or six minutes before we start cutting into them. We'll get everything else uh, heated up, plated up. We'll see how this pairs up with the beer I've got in mind. All right. One of these days I'll be able to complete a whole cooking show without screwing my camera work up. I have to get my director back involved, I guess. So what we got is another ribeye steak. Now this is not a big monster ribeye steak like the last one. Because honestly, I couldn't finish the last one. We got a little three bean casserole. I got some angel hair, garlic pasta, with a little bit of French and dried onions on top. And today, what we're going to pair that up with is not this fruited sour. We're going to try the Moorlands. Uh, the reason I'm doing the Moorlands today is because I did a Scottish ale earlier today. So we're going to put it up against an Irish ale. We're going, to, we're going to see which one. We're going to see if Moreland's can take down the dirty bastard. First off, let's get a little sip of the beer. We'll put that in my fancy bottle cap collection. Hmm. This already smells a lot less hoppy than the uh, than the ale, the Scottish ale. Brewed and bottled, Moreland's uh, Brewing Company out of Nevada, California. Awesome. This is uh, only a five percenter, so not quite the alcohol content that that we're used to around here. Dry, roasty, and incredibly rich in flavor, Dragoon Dry Irish Stout is made with a unique blend of imported hops, malted barley from the United Kingdom. This award-winning stout is brewed in the Irish tradition to commensurate General Stephen Moylan, Irish-born commander of the 4th Continental Dragoons during the American Revolutionary War. Well, that's pretty damn cool. Should have read the bottle ahead of time. Let's give it a four. Ah, now that's stout looking. The Dirty Bastard was a lot more of an ale. It was ruby colored. We got that nice chocolatey uh, coffee looking. Mm. It's got a nice smell to it. It's kind of a kind of a coffee smell. Smell that. Put a nose on it, honey. You smell coffee? It's roasted. You smell it like that. Mm-mm. I kind of smell vanilla. 
Yeah, it's got some vanilla notes. It's a. Uh... I don't smell any coffee. What do you smell? I smell like a vanilla. I can smell like the roasted hops or something. I don't know. Roasted, whatever's roasted, you know. Let's give it a taste. So, far, far less hoppy than the uh, Scottish ale. It's got a, uh, right off the bat, a smoother, uh, easier to drink taste than the Dirty Bastard. But, the, but then again, the Dirty Bastard's not for we lads. This, This is nice. This is real, super smooth. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I'm putting the Moorlands for me uh, above uh, the Scottish Ale, the Dirty Bastard. Uh, the Dragoons is just super rich, super smooth. It's got a lot of viscosity. Look at that new word I just learned. Uh, man, super smooth. Try a little sip. We'll give it a try. I think it's gonna go great with this steak. Smoother than the other one. Yes. Yeah. Slightly more bottom back over here, baby. Gotta have my props. Taking all my stuff. Alright. So the beer. Big thumbs up. And that's honestly a beer I probably never would have thought in a million years that I would have liked. I'll cut all that out. I think this steak's going to be so tender. It's a lot more rare than the last one. Mmm. 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 Now six and a half minutes is going to, uh, especially with a, a thicker steak, it's going to be pretty rare in the middle, but it's not going to be like super rare, just rare. It's not medium rare, it's pretty rare. But... Mm. All right. Let's wash it down with this Moreland's. Mm -mm -mm. That makes me feel like uh makes you feel like you went back in time or something. Mm. A couple of these beans here that stay healthy. Mm. So the Moreland's does pair up nicely with ribeye. Really nicely. It's super smooth. Like you see this bottle, you may almost be intimidated. Because it says on there, dry Irish style stout, right? And this is just a Scottish ale. Uh, this, this may be the smoothest beer I've reviewed so far. Mm. But, uh, I just can't get over how smooth it is. Now the alcohol content in this is really not very much. 5%, uh, that's pretty low, but it is super smooth. Have I said smooth yet? It's pretty mm -hmm. smooth. Okay. Mm -mm. So this is the same size as the astronaut status. One pint, six ounces. I'm going to tell you what that astronaut status. Uh, it was super strong up front and it got smoother and smoother. This is super smooth right off the bat. Now granted this is not a barrel aged beer. This is just a traditional Irish stout, but I'm telling you, I'm a fan of this. 
I'm a fan of this so much I might buy another one. Man. Super good. And it pairs up nice with this steak. Of course my heart will always be with my Goose Island Bourbon County Stouts. Nothing pairs up better with a nice pan fried ribeye steak than these things. But we're gonna enjoy this dinner. I'm gonna finish this movies. Uh, dragoons, dragoons. I had no idea that was like a uh, Revolutionary War reference, but awesome. Love it. Uh, this is a, uh, of all the non barrel aged beers that I've tried so far, this is my top one. I really like it. It uh, feels like if you were out on a hot summer day mowing the yard and you came in, this would be just what you'd be reaching for. It's, uh, it's got the smoothness and the easy drinkability like just a regular old American beer, but it is uh, tasty and delicious. It's got that nice stout flavor and smell. while just being the, the smoothest damn beer I've tried yet. That had go. Mm. All right, one word to sum it up, smooth. I'm gonna finish this ribeye. Y'all take care. Uh, oh, hold on a second. Now I'm gonna try something. And I tried this with a Scottish uh, ale here. Because I, I love I love the barrel aged stuff, right? So we're gonna to try to add a little whiskey to this. And, uh, it might, it might change everything, let's see. So we're gonna put another little little dab of this Evan Williams that my buddies from 1290 sent to me. Just a dab. We're gonna swish this around just a little bit. I bet this is going to be so freaking good. Let me get a pint of steak before I try it. I'm going to let that mix for just a second. And we're going to see if we can uh, get a little bit of that Bourbon County Stout magic. Cheers. Mmm, my, my. Mmm. Mm hmm How good was that? How was that damn good? Holy crap. Mm. Whoo! Give that a try. Alright. We got a lot of Bourbon County beers. Bourbon County. We got a lot of barrel aged beers to get through. I'm just starting this journey. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I got the KBS coming up. If I can, if I can get my hands on it, we're gonna drink some KBS and maybe the CBS. I want to get some variations of the Bourbon County. I'm gonna try the different ones. Uh, see if I can find one maybe Martha Dell likes. Uh, I'm down for just about any kind of new beer experience, except for IPAs. I'm sorry, I'm just not a big hops guy. Like, like man, if. Uh, if it's just super hoppy, I'm kind of out of that. I don't know why. You know, like I said, to each their own. It's like that every one is maybe. I'm just putting all my drinks way far away from me for some reason. This. We're going to call this a Dragoon Hammer. This might be one of my favorite new drinks. It's so good. Hmm. Y'all rock on. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, y'all.